It'll go on until the sand wasp starves. Because he's programmed. Now, a lot of us have allowed the world to program us, especially when it comes to anger. And we get mad, and we are programmed not to forgive. We continue. We start doing the same behavior. We just continue and continue. Now, the Mayo Clinic, um, you're going to have to back up. The Mayo Clinic says that there's five benefits for forgiving others. I thought these were pretty good. Uh, and there's more than this. I just These were the ones that I thought were good. There's less stress if you forgive others. It'll lower your blood pressure. You'll have fewer symptoms of depression, less anxiety, and less chronic pain. Now, right there, there's some good physical, medical reasons to forgive people, right? Well, has anybody hurt you? Have you been hurt? And have you carried it around for a long time? Pastor Al read the scripture, and so we're going to jump past that passage again. Uh, and there's a, I want to ask you this morning, how do you overcome the evil that is aimed at you? See, you get mad because people did something to you. And our perception is that this was evil, or this was a bad thing that happened. How do you overcome that? Well, each of us face something like that. On the front of your sermon notes, you'll find a few, some passages that they're there for you to read on your own. But it just talks about the fact that we will all face these things. Uh, Chip Ingram, who designed this sermon series on Romans 12, he calls them uh, rocks. The uh, it's the fallen world, the rocks of evil, injustice, and betrayal will happen to all of us sooner or later. So how do you overcome this? Well, each of us face our challenges, and there, let's, I want to go to a guy in the Bible named Joseph. Many of you, most of you in here will know about Joseph. Today, we'll, when I tell you the story of Joseph, it will just be a review. Joseph's journey reveals how to overcome evil aimed at you. Well, if you don't know about Joseph, let me tell you a little bit about him. See, his father's name was Jacob, and Jacob wanted to marry this girl named Leah. And I mean, this girl named Rachel. And Rachel had a sister named Leah. And trying to make this long story short, um, Jacob agreed to work for seven years so he could marry Rachel. He worked for the seven years. There was a wedding, but Rachel's father pulled a fast one because Leah is the older sister, and it's customary for the older sister to marry first. So, she, you know, the bride was veiled, so he snuck Leah in there instead of Rachel. So Jacob married Rachel by accident. He didn't mean to, but the father meant to. I married Leah by accident. Thank you. You keep doing that for me. If I get them backwards, just do this. <laughs> Don't start doing this, though. <laughs> just do this. So then... Uh, then Jacob complained. He got mad at his father-in-law, and his father-in-law said, that's fine, go ahead and, and, and celebrate the rest of the wedding week with Leah, and then I'll let you marry Rachel. But you're going to have to work another seven years. Now, a lot of people think he had to work another seven years before he got to marry Rachel, but he didn't. He married Leah one week, and then a week later, he married Rachel, but he had to work another seven years. Now, he loved Rachel. The Bible will... It's clear about that, that he loved Rachel. Well, Leah started having babies. She had Reuben and Simeon and Levi and Judah. Well, Rachel didn't like this because she felt that she had been abandoned. She, she cried out to God and said, why have you abandoned me? Why can't I have children? So she gave her maid, Bilhah, to Jacob. And then with Bilhah, there was the fifth and sixth son, Dan and Naphtali. Well, during that time, Leah, she got upset because she stopped having babies. And, uh, you know, what is it? I've never watched the show, but isn't there something about the housewives of New Jersey or, Des or something like that, real housewives or something? I've never seen the show, but I I've seen commercials, in it, and it reminds me of this family right here, um, of these two ladies. So Leah gets mad, and she's not able to have babies, so she takes her maid uh, Zilpah and gives her to Jacob. And then through Zilpah, you have Gad, Asher, Issachar, and Zebulun. So then uh, finally, Rachel is able to have a baby and she has Joseph. Now, Joseph was very special because she he was the son 
of, his, of Jacob's love, Rachel. So that's why when you read that passage, you'll read like in uh, Genesis 37, you know, the coat of many colors, Jacob loved Joseph more than the others. Uh, verse 3, Jacob's, Jacob loved Joseph more than any other children because Joseph had been born to him in his old age and was the son of Rachel. Uh, but the brothers hated Joseph. Joseph, this guy's coming from a pretty dysfunctional family, okay? And yet he is, becomes this, uh, this huge character in the scriptural. He, um, he's born up from a dysfunctional family. He's rejected by his siblings. In 37, his brothers sell him into slavery. Uh, they, they actually plan to kill him, but through some circumstances, and obviously it was God uh, allowing this to happen or stopping them from killing him, he was sold into slavery. He was abandoned to a foreign land. Potiphar bought him, and he went to work for Potiphar as a slave. Uh, sold into slavery, he was falsely accused of rape, Potiphar's wife uh, had a fancy for Joseph, and Joseph stayed his course. Uh, he was sent to prison unjustly, and he, had, he was forgotten by a friend. That's the friend who, uh, we'll get to that in a few minutes, but the friend who Joseph had interpreted the dream. And he said, hey, remember me when you go to Pharaoh. And, and the friend forgot him for two years. Well, then uh, Joseph... He, sir, Joseph's response to evil circumstances, he survived, he learned, and adapted. He did that in Potiphar's house. He became the head of Potiphar's house. Everywhere he went, he, became, he was in charge of things. He thrived. He, re, he used his gifts where he was. He resisted. He refused to bail out on God's plan. That's like uh, Potiphar's wife. He wouldn't give in. I mean, here he is, a 17 or 18-year-old guy, and, but he would not give in. The sexual temptation. Uh, he waited. He's in prison for years, and he just waited for God, and he grew. And uh, by the end, what happens toward the end? You see, Joseph's brothers were in were in Canaan, and Joseph was in Egypt. He's in charge of Egypt. Pharaoh has a dream, and Joseph interprets the dream and tells Pharaoh, "There's going to be seven years of plenty and seven years of famine." So Pharaoh puts Joseph in charge. Says, "Who else?" could do it better than you. So Joseph is now, after being sold into slavery, he is now like the second in command in Egypt. But back in Canaan now, there's the seven years of plenty go by. Back in Canaan, there's famine. And people are starving and they're hungry. Jacob sends his sons to Egypt to get food. Let's pick this up in about chapter 43. So the brothers go to Egypt, get food, and then they go back to their father. But while they were in Egypt, uh, they, they ran into Joseph. Joseph recognized his brothers. They didn't recognize him. Because, see, Joseph looked more like an Egyptian now. He spoke their language, and uh, so they didn't recognize him. So Joseph kind of pulled a fast one on them. He actually put their money back in their bags of grain. So they finally went back after all their, the first grain that they had got ran out. But they, Joseph had kept one of the brothers. See, Joseph wanted to see his youngest brother, Benjamin. He said, I'm going to keep one brother here, and, I, and when you come back, bring Benjamin. Bring your youngest brother so I know that you're telling the truth and you're not spies. So finally, they convinced Jacob.